Welcome to the Students Rebuild Healing Classroom webcast. I'm Ahmed Chabuddin. I'm a reporter with Vice, and we're here with the Global, Global Nomads Group in New York. As many of you may know, the war in Syria has been raging on for more than five years now, and over four and a half million Syrians have been forced to escape their homes and leave Syria, and half of the population of Syria has been displaced. That makes the Syrian conflict the UN Refugee Agency's worst crisis uh, in over a quarter of a century. So for the past nine months, students around the world have been committed to the Students Rebuild Housing Classrooms Challenge. The young people have been making pinwheels, uh, again, all around the wor world, that are going to be matched with a donation to the International Rescue Committee's Healing Classrooms Program. The Healing Classrooms Program provides safe and nurturing learning spaces, not just for the individuals, but for those whose lives have been most directly affected by the crisis. So the hope is that they're able to start to build a future, not only for themselves, but for their communities. So for the next 40 minutes, we have an opportunity to bring together Syrian youth who are going to be participating in the Healing Classroom Challenge and the program with young people from New Jersey. Uh, they're taking the challenge as well. That means that students are going to be learning firsthand from young people whose lives have been deeply impacted on a daily basis by the Syrian refugee crisis and the war. Together, they're going to explore how education opportunities uh, can not only empower us to shape our own lives and our own future, but collectively can have that same power. So let's head over to Lebanon where we can have perhaps Abiyah say hello and introduce us to our friends in Lebanon. Marhaba, ana asmi Abir. Sakin fi majdal Anjar. Anjar, jittu ma'a muallimati Amina wa Amani. Sakin fi Suriya. Jina fi zahla. Amri 11 sana. مرحبا أنا اسمي محمد محمد سمي سمان عمري 13 سنة. Hi, my name is Aura and this is Hannah, Oreha and Ernest and Mrs. Broomhead and right now we are in our middle school uh, which is in Apsik in New Jersey which is a small town that no one really knows about but <laughs> we're really excited to get to know you guys and to know that this all started with Mrs. Broomhead introducing the pinwheel challenge to now um, is a really an awesome thing. Um, hi, my name is Hannah, and you know, every day I I come to school and I have my subjects like language arts, math, and science. I would like to know what in every what do you do each day when you go to school? Marhaba, ana ismi Amani, umri 12 sana. Adhabu ila adhabu ila al-madrasa aqra Englishi wa Arabi. تصير الساعة 11 نطلع إلى الفرصة نأكل قص لدينا نشرب ماء نلعب نلعب قليلا مع أصدقائنا نف نف نفوت نفوت إلى الصف مرحبا أنا محمد بعد المدرسة بلعب فوتبول وبتفرج شوية على التلفزيون وأنتوا شو بتسووا بعد المدرسة شو الألعاب اللي بتحبوا تلعبوها؟ My name is Ernest and right after school I usually go outside and play basketball and football. Like practicing and trying to get better. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Oreha, and I don't play a lot of games after school. I do draw and I do read books. And a couple of months ago, I was in chorus and drama club. So one thing that I've learned uh, working as a journalist, especially on this story, is that we often hear a lot about what's happening in Syria, what's happening in the region, but we don't hear from the people that. Uh, who are directly affected by this, which is why I think it's great that we have this opportunity to correct, connect directly with youth from Syria who are in Lebanon and find out firsthand what is happening to them. So Hannah, uh, in New Jersey, perhaps you want to start us off with a question about uh, their daily lives? Okay. Um, hi, my name is Hannah, and I have moved in the past away from my home that I grew up in, and it, I have learned to get used to it, so, and I do know what it's like to be separated from one family member, 
So I would like to know what it was like for you to leave your home in Syria. وفاطمه وامان كثير كثير بيلعب بحبهم كثير ولما الفوت على الصف بكتب لنا الملاقات سوا كمان قديش بنحب بعضنا واذا كل ما بتعرف انا بعلمها اياها فلينا فلينا ان بكره بنلتقي في المدرسه اجت بعدنا فلينا وصرنا بعيدين كثير اجت الطياره قصفت المدرسه ضل صفنا ما انغصف لسه بس الغصن الثاني انغصفنا يعني نهدوا الشبابيك ضل كل وحده راحت على بيتها انا بكره بتلاقى وبلش ترش سوا تا بتسوي حفله للمعلمه بكره جينا على البيت اهلي لقيتهم اهلي لقيتهم عند بيت عمي رحنا على بيت عمي ضلينا هنيك مسوين غدا تقدينا عندهم اذا جينا على البيت امن البيت مغصوف قال ابي بكره بدنا نروح على لبنان قلنا له يا ابي ما بدنا نروح لا نحن رفقاتنا اللي بنحبهم ورفقاتنا اللي بنحبهم نموت وكثير وجدودنا وحبابتنا ورفقاتنا وعمامنا ما في شيء هنيك ما بنحبه بطرحنا اللي بلا فيه وانا بنات عمي وعز رفقاتي هلا راح ما عاد لا ضل مطرح كثير حزنت عليهم بكيت بكيت كثير يا ريت هلا بيرجعوا وبترجع مدرستنا اللي بنحبها نحن الاطفال السوريين من اول ما خرجنا نحن الاطفال السوريين من اول ما خرجنا من بيوتنا طلعنا على لبنان هاجرنا على لبنان حقوق الطفل كلياتها راحت ما عاد فيك تضل عن حقوق الطفل والاطفال السوريين كلياتهم كان هلا كانوا من زمان حتى الكبار كانوا ما يعرفوا سيره الموت هلا اي ولد صار صار يتمنى الموت باي لحظه حقوق الطفل عندكم عندكم تكاملين ولا لا Hi, my name is Oreha, and in the U.S. I do have my rights as a child. I have my rights to a free education, I have rights to medical care so I'll be healthy, and I have rights to live in a safe environment. Thank you. Obviously, a lot of us, um, with the absence of these kinds of opportunities, rely on social media and the news to get an understanding of what life is like for other people, in this case for Syrian refugees. I'm curious. Um, For our U.S. students, uh, do you guys feel as though what you're learning, what you're hearing today is different than what you hear in social media or on the news about the crisis? What we're learning in class is different than what we're seeing on the news because, like, what we learn in class is, like, bigger events than the news because on the news they put, like, they, like, don't talk about, like, the whole... the whole idea of what's happening today. I go to school every day and I know where my family is. I know that they're safe. And I see in the news about attacks and violence in Syria and know that many Syrians who have left their country still have family there. What emotions or how do you feel about this? <laughs> حزنت كتير وفي عالم انه بسوريا في مطارح كتير ما فيها لا اكل ولا طعام يعني الطعام ما في ابدا ولا ملابس عم يموتوا جوع هلا عندكم انتم بامريكا في حرب او نزاعات I don't think that there are conflicts big enough to drive families out of their homes But I do think that discrimination is still a big issue in our country, even though we are known as melting pot of the world where everyone's equal and everyone has freedom, it's still a big issue whether it's your religion, race, or gender. I think that is, if anything, our biggest issue. As you know, we have a live audience watching with us and they're asking some great questions. So I just want to go to one of those questions now, coming from Oak Brook, prep in South Carolina. This is for uh, our Syrian friends. They want to know what is the biggest difference between school in Syria and school in Lebanon? هلا لما كنا في سوريا كانوا ما يعطونا كثير لغه انجليزيه لما طلعنا على لبنان صرنا اكثر شيء ناخذ لغه انجليزيه وتعلمنا اللغه الانجليزيه شكرا. لمن بسوريا بسوريا ما ينطونا انجليزي فردنا ما ينطونا الا حصتين غير غير رياضيات وعرب ما ينطونا هنا تحسنا اكثر وبلشت لبني مستقبلنا هنا هنا انطونا انطونا جغرافيا انطونا اي كل اي ماده انطونا يعني هناك يعني مادات بالحيل ما ينطون شيء هنا مدرسه ابير because your english is getting better i want to ask you in english a question about what you think Um, maybe some ways or some um, advice you can give to your friends 
here in America about how education can help prepare you for your future and contribute to your community. المجتمع يساعدنا كثير لما بالمستقبل أكبر وصير كبيرة بساعد أخواتي اللي صغار وبعلمهم إذا كلمة إذا صار في الصف الأول إذا كلمة ما بيعرفوها حرف ما بيعرفوا بعلمني إياه أنا بحب أخواتي كثير وبقول الجيران أنا بحب أكلمنا بصير أكبر بعمر بعمر حجر جدران شيء بصمم شيء جديد أما جيلي بيجي يعني بقول له شدوا حيلكم ولما بتكبر بصيروا بتنا إذا حرف إذا كلمة ما بيعرفوا بيعلموا إياها أو أو كلمات شكرا. When I grow up, I want to go to college to be a mechanic. I want to know what do you want to do when you grow up. مرحبا أنا اسمي محمد. بكرة أكبر بالمستقبل بحب بحب إنه يكون شخص مهم كمخترع والدراسة هي اللي بتخليني أسوي هالشي مثلا ممكن كمادة العلوم هي اللي بتخليني استكشف وهي اللي بتخليني أتأقلم أي شيء بالحياة وهي اللي بتساعدني على كل شيء وهي بتعلمني الاختراعات. We, for our pinwheel event, made it a school-wide event. So we had, between the students, um, teachers, parents that were able to join us, we had approximately 400 participants. Um, and I think, in general, it, it allowed all of us to become a little bit more empathetic um, of the situation, and especially how it affected students that were the same age as, as the students that were in our building. Um, and I think it also gave you know, all of our students the opportunity to realize that everyone has a different educational experience, um, but there are also many similarities, um, and the goals that they have are very similar. Um, like, for example, Hannah has told me that she wants to become an architect, and, you know, there are children right here that want to be architects as well, so um, it's just one thing to appreciate that, you know, their education is key to that, and that their path to that might be completely different, but they have the same goals. Obviously Thank that's you. One of, and obviously that's one of many lessons uh, that we're all learning, and so I just would want to go back to you, Ariha and Hannah. Maybe you could talk to us about what you've learned um, from your Syrian friends or the refugee crisis through participating in this challenge, this classroom. Hi, my name is Hannah, and I think that the um, refugee crisis, what I've learned about it from, you know, my Syrian peers, um, I've learned much about, like, where, how, how they're living now compared to where the, how they did before, and, you know, like, what they have to go through and how their life has changed. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Oreja, and I have learned um, that there's these two wonderful teachers and that they're teaching the Syrian peers education, and I'm really grateful for that. And also, like, when I think about my life, it's when I have bad days, they're having worse, worse days, worse days, <laughs> worse days. <laughs> um, more days. Yeah, more difficult days, and um, they're in a very tough situation. Does Dakota Hills Middle School in Minnesota want a beer to know that they've learned so much from you and that one student has used your story in her speech and that they really wish you all the best. Um, we also have a question from Isha in Illinois who wants to know what is the biggest change you've experienced since you moved from your home in Syria? <laughs> I want to uh, give you all an opportunity maybe to wrap up now because obviously we've learned quite a bit 
um, the past uh, 30 minutes or so about the impact that the Syrian refugee crisis actually has, but also, as importantly, about the power of education in terms of how it can shape our future. So for those of you watching, we encourage you to learn more about the refugee crisis, um, more about how Syrians uh, are living in Lebanon and in other countries like Turkey and around the world, uh, and also take part in the Students Rebuild Healing Classrooms Challenge, where uh, your pinwheel will raise funds to contribute to the International Rescue Committee's Healing Classrooms programs, both in Lebanon and Iraq. Uh, perhaps we can start uh, in New Jersey. Aura, maybe you want to lead us off with some final final words? Okay. Um, this was such an amazing experience, I think, for everyone uh, to know that, you know, to do this is really something that not everyone gets to do. And I really wanted to end it and wrap it up with saying that I didn't think that you guys were going to be providing an education. And when I did, I was very surprised in a good way. And it made me very glad. And I just wanted to tell you that to not take that for granted because education is power, not just knowing what's two plus two, but knowing how to handle situations that life brings you such as this and what doesn't kill you makes you stronger and I want you to never lose hope and always approach situations with a positive mindset because things will always get better and you know you become what you think and your attitude creates your life so thank you and it was such an amazing experience <laughs> إن شاء الله يا رب كل تعبكم يصير أحسن إن شاء الله وإن شاء الله نكون أصدقاء ونحسن لكم الفرصة نضيف عنها عشان نحسن أحسن